Okay, welcome back folks for CE 529. We are uh, starting a new lab today. And that lab has sort of three different deliverables. And what you're gonna be doing is I provided the instructions, but obviously you're gonna be given an assignment to, to create the US 101 traffic simulation model. You won't have the step-by-step -step instructions anymore, but just the broad picture of what you need to do. So you need to figure out what, we, what might your OD matrix look like? And obviously I'm here to help. And I think Vaishnavi should be here as well. I don't know if she's here already, but if not, she should be coming soon. And uh, so, so that's basically the task. Now there are three different deliverables and those deliverables first include just creating a base model of the network. And when I say base model, that means the existing current condition as you would model them with different traffic volumes and different uh, traffic volumes from the ramps and all of that movement of traffic. And then I've given you a document that will help you kind of think about what is the scenarios that you have to model. And those scenarios essentially are looking at uh, some of the ramps in San Luis Obispo to US 101 that can be closed. And then based on that, what will be the impact of what will be the impact of those ramp closures essentially and uh, to, to do that you need to also figure out when you're comparing the existing conditions of the base conditions with the scenario conditions which will include ramp closures what are some of the things that you could use to measure whether those ramp closures would be effective or not effective okay and then once you've done that then so I need to see the base model, VSIM model. I need to see the revised model, which ramps are you closing and all of that based on the document that I've provided. And then once you're done with that comparison of those, the base scenario versus the scenario condition uh, or the model condition for ramp closures. And then a final report that has different components and so forth. So it's quite a, quite a bit of a lab work that is involved here. Uh, uh, it's an individual assignment, not a group assignment. So you'll be working individually. This is a small enough class that we can work individually here. Uh, but it's gonna it's gonna take some doing. So you'll have to sort of zoom into the US 101 uh, in San Luis Obispo, and there are instructions for for you know what you need to model and all of that. What's going to be your starting point and end point, uh, and so on and so forth. So yeah, you should get working on that. If there are any questions that come up as you're following instructions? Please let me know. I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. And then, uh, yeah, and I'll post, I'll be posting some of your grades online for uh, for your previous VSIM tutorial lab. If you see your grade is not posted there, be prepared to just show me your, show me your network from the last lab. So if you've already shown it to me, I should be able to post in the grade, but I might, I might have some discrepancy between what the records that I've kept versus what you've done. So if there is, so you all you have to do is just show me the show me the model, and then I'll I'll give you the full grade for that assignment. Okay. So with that said, uh, let's let's get on this. And uh, if you haven't already done so, if you can fill out the muddiest point survey for the last week uh, on Google Forms, I've provided the link on your uh, on your uh, Canvas page. So if you can do that as soon as possible, that would be wonderful. And uh, it, and what I'll do is I'll probably take some time. In the lab today, maybe in uh, half an hour or so, I'll try to go over some of those muddiest points just so. Uh, and then other than that, we'll just be working on the lab. Any questions that come up, please let me know. Okay. Thank you. Okay, as I said before, just make sure that you are using the, the 2019 data for any kind of traffic volumes or ramp volumes that you're using and not 2020 or beyond. I think 2020 is the latest year that you, they have data available. In terms of what are some of the best practices about building a network like this? By the way, this is sort of the assignment or a project that you might get in the real world. So this is sort of exactly, so you're never gonna get like a OD matrix or anything like that, or you will just be given instruction that, hey, go ahead and simulate this segment of the road and then do these and these scenarios. So it's a very, sort of realistic assignment that, that you might encounter. So one thing I wanted to point out is that you could 
So one thing is that you know you want to draw you know as long links as possible. So what you want to do is like if you're simulating northbound direction, I would simulate like you know from start to finish. Obviously, this doesn't look right, so I will uh, you know generate spline on that. So spline on this segment maybe you know five or six, and then I can just start to. In fact, I'll probably like you know create more spline points on this network so I can I can align this network to the. You know, it's still not very smooth, so I can probably add uh, you know may, maybe more spline points. So that looks smooth now, right? So you can you can make it look smooth. Now the thing is that you can sort of see that this is approximately at the right place. Oh, it's going the other direction, so I can just move it over the southbound side. Okay, and then if I right click on it, I can also create like generate opposing direction. But I normally, you know, it's not a good idea when you're doing the freeway to generate opposite direction directly. You might almost be better because you don't want any interaction between the two directions of traffic. So you're probably better off doing the same thing for the freeway going the other way, what I did. So instead of generating opposite direction, because then that way, you don't know what the median looks like and so forth. And there might actually be some interaction between the two. So, so instead of sort of generating opposing direction, I will just create this northbound link or this southbound link. And then I can you know, create uh, another link that goes the other way. Now, this is sort of a smooth one. It's all two lanes. The question comes up now, how do I model, like you know, when I have a three lane link, for example, like for example, I wanna, I wanna have a three lane link. So this was, this is supposed to be a three lane link, right? So when the ramp lane comes in, it's, it's th third lane gets created and then it merges back into it. So for example, this one, there is a ramp that might come in and, and there is a third link to it. Now, what you do is you want to have like one whole link that covers the start to finish of your network. Anytime you need a third lane, you sort of create, if you right click on it, you can create split link here. Okay. And that automatically connects, it splits the link and then creates a connector that connects these two lanes with these two lanes. Okay, this lane with this lane, this lane, that lane, and all of that. Now, let's say I want my third three lanes to be, uh, so this kind of splits at this point. So I got this. And remember, now there, now there are two different links and they are connected by a small connector. So if you now look at the list of links, in addition to the link that I split, one and two, the main links, there's like a 10,000 number. That's a small connector that connects between. I did not create this connector. It got automatically generated when I right click and said split link. Okay. Now, maybe I want this link now to have, if I zoom in here, I, I maybe I want wherever I split that link, Maybe I want this link to now have, I can double click on it and say, this link should have three lanes. Okay. So that will give me that extra lane that I want here. And then maybe I want to go back to, and I'm not doing it correctly because I, I'm just doing it wherever, but I'm just showing you how to do it at any location that you want. So now let's say I want to go back to two lanes. I right click on it and I say split link here again. And then the link going forward, I'll click on it and go back my number of lanes down to two again. So I can have sort of, oh, I don't know why I did not create the connector, but, but if the, it should create the link here when I split the connector, but if, yes. Uh, right click, uh, what do you mean? Yeah, I did not actually yet go, go to three lanes to two lanes. I just have connectors right now. I did not do that, if I, but I, if I double click on it, I can reduce the number of lanes here. Okay, for any link, I can go back and reduce the number of lanes to two. And when I do that, I don't know why, why my connector disappears, but connector should not. Oh, and one more thing about vSIM. It's weird that that's so whenever it's like, you know, anytime you're talking about Caltrans is manual or anything like that, Lane number one is refers to the inside most lane, innermost lane. But in vSIM, when I say lane number one, 
that will be the outermost layer. Okay, so that's something that you know, just a different nomenclature. So, so when it says lane one, lane two, lane three, all of them are connected. If you don't want to connect that, so you just say, if you say lane one is not connected, if you do that, then lane one will not connect to lane one on this, and you can see that this right connection disappears, the outward connection disappears. Okay, so that's sort of how you, how you're going to do it, how you're going to create the link and split the link, and if you only want two lanes to it, then you will just make it into a second and third lane and you will just say, okay, this, and you hit okay. And then if you want this to only have sort of two lanes, you can double click on it and then you can, you can go back down to, now if your connector disappears, you can actually always connect these things again, right? You can, you can connect these by control and right click. You can create your own connector too. So where lane two and lane three connect with lane one and lane two. Because the right one, rightmost lane, you want you want them to be just. Now, if they don't align well, you can always drag it in the correct position, and then they'll start aligning well as well. So now what I've done is, I've gone from a two-lane section, I created a third lane, and then I created back down again two lanes. So that's how you sort of create different segments. But you do want one whole road to be represented by one link, and then as needed, you just split that link uh, on it because that way you can get the right alignment going. For your whole network. Okay. So just play around with it. If you have questions, let us know. You can go from there. So you, you want to go ahead and give it a try? Yes. We can have your attention, please, real quick for a second. So I just did find like on a Washington DOT vSIM protocol. And, and these protocols are good resources, right? A lot of states have them. I just picked out the Washington state one. And that shows you how you can model a situation like this. So you can see that this, what's happening is that this is what they're trying to model. This is what it looks like in the real world. Okay, this is the, let me go ahead and share screen with this. You can see that this is what it looks like in the real world. This is a scenario they're trying to model. So there is like a, a ramp that comes in to a three lane freeway. And then it comes into as a three lane, right? So this is what it's going on, what's going on here. So there are vehicles that are coming in, they're merging into this lane. So this is one good way of merging that could be, is that you will, you will have it way where you'll have like a three lane link, you'll have the ramp come in. So these, all that are separately highlighted, these boxed in things, they are their own links. So this is a link from the mainline freeway. And then the link is split into a four lane freeway. So you can see like, you know, there's a four lane. Okay. And then onto the four lane. And then this was the ramp, the on-ramp link. And then after this point, it goes back down to three lanes. And then this will be the fourth lane. And, and this is sort of how you're supposed to model. Okay, so this is just one example of how you can, uh, you know, how you can model it. And, uh, and this will be sort of the appropriate way of, of dealing with this. And they, they talk about, how precisely to do it. So, and these kind of things, you know, if you're interested, you can always find these things by, by looking up how to model paper in vSIM, for example, right? So these kind of things you can, you can locate online. But the idea is the best way to do it is, uh, is through splitting of the links at different points, wherever you need to add or subtract the link. and start a whiteboard sharing. Okay. Okay. In fact, let me share. So let's say this is your And then, so let's say this is your freeway, right? And then you have 
set on ramps and off ramps. I'm going to go ahead and draw some off on ramps first. So let's say you have these three on ramps. And I'm just drawing the northbound or, uh, direction of the freeway. And you can do that, repeat the same thing for the southbound freeway. And then you have a certain off ramps that I'm going to draw. So you have these two off ramps. And then your network starts here. Your network starts here. And your network ends here. So now the question is, how do we sort of create an OD matrix? And I know your network is probably a little bit longer. It has more on and off ramp, but this discussion should help you figure out what we are trying to do. So your OD matrix in this scenario, the way you will start it is you'll start defining some zones here. So I'm gonna start by, okay, I'm gonna call this maybe zone one, okay? I'll call this zone one. So anytime I have the start of my network or any of the on-ramps, they will become sort of my origin points or origins that I'll have in my network. So, so maybe th this is one, this is two, I'll call this three here, and I'll call this four. So I'll have these four origin points, they can't be destinations and, and, and that's okay. I, if I wanna call this, this won't be an origin at all, but I can start by calling it number five. Okay, so this, this is my five. And then, and then I can start uh, you know, with my, my off, uh, off ramp six and seven. I have one, two, so, oh no, five, six, seven here. Let's call it seven. So I have, so in this scenario, I'll have what I call a seven by seven OD matrix. Okay. Now the seven by seven OD matrix, good, one good thing about it, so, so, so any traffic that you're gonna create here, you're gonna create how many routes for, for the traffic input volume that comes here, and that's gonna be a, your origin point. You're gonna have how many destination points? You're gonna have one to this green off ramp, two to this number six. So you're gonna have traffic flow going from one to seven, one to six, and then one to five, okay? So even if it's gonna be a seven by seven matrix, a lot of these input points will be, a lot of these sort of zone to zone traffic flows will still be zero, okay? And we can, we can look at it again. So if I'm, I'm, and then if you look at zone number two, could you have traffic from going from zone number two to zone number one? According to this freeway, no, right? So that two to one flow will be zero always. Then you'll have some flow going from two to seven, some flow going from two to six, some flow going from two to five, and that's it, okay? So what I'll do in this scenario is that I will go ahead and create a seven by seven matrix that looks like this. I'm gonna probably just go ahead and free draw. Okay, and I'm gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then same thing here, one, two, seven, going all the way up to seven. And then I'll start filling out zeros where the zeros fit. And then I'm gonna to have to think about, okay, and then obviously for zone two or for zone three, you're gonna have a very small net network that, that, that can only go to three to six or three to five, okay? Now, if you know the traffic volume here from the Caltrans data or whatever, that data doesn't give you much in the way of, much in the way of what that, uh, you know, how much should be the volume that starts here. So, I mean, you, you can only get, based on the input data, if you have any kind of traffic volume here from the Caltrans, that will become your input volume that you're gonna input at this point, okay? And then if you have any kind of ramp data, you, these numbers will also become, they will come from your input volume. So they will provide you, these three numbers will, and these four numbers really, they will become your input volumes at these points, okay? Now, you'll have some off-ramp volumes too in the Caltrans data, 
right? But those, those data are not something that you can input. Those data will not be something that you'll input. The off-ramp counts can only be used for validation purposes. Okay, you don't know because in VSIM, we always input the traffic volume and then those can only be input at the origin points. So you're all your on-ramps at the network starting point. If you have any data on these off-ramps, these uh, green off-ramps or this endpoint on the network, they will be used for validation purposes and validating your OD matrix. Now, the question that you need to be, that you are probably thinking about is that, how do I know what traffic goes from, goes through on this network one to five and what traffic should I exit, should, should exit on ramp seven or ramp or this location six or whatever, right? How do you know that? We don't, we don't actually know that. We don't know exactly what's gonna happen, but we can probably guess based on you know, certain assumptions that we might be able to make. So for example, uh, you, know, you might be able to, so you, so you generally speaking, it's the afternoon peak hour going north. There is a lot of traffic that goes from downtown San Luis Obispo to North County, right? So you'll say, okay, I'm gonna say maybe 90% of the traffic goes to, so I'm gonna assign like 0.9 traffic. So for this one to five, I want to assign like maybe if this is my origin is one and my destination is five, I'm going to probably put 90% of the traffic going from one to, to zone five. Okay, my zone five was here. So I'm going to assign that to be 90% of the traffic or 0.90. And then I'm going to say maybe 5% goes to six and 5% goes to seven. Now you, you are just basically picking out these numbers. But the idea is that you run with those numbers and then you're not just picking it out. You're just making some, some reasonable assumption. So for example, if you only put in like 40% here and then 30% exiting on these ramps, that would not be a reasonable assumption in my opinion. Because you know, during the afternoon peak hour, most of the traffic is going through to the North County that's coming into downtown. I mean, you would probably not put in, you put yourself in to that freeway traffic if you're just sort of going into the, within the city. So that there might be some traffic there, but not a lot. And then you will do the same thing for two to seven. So for example, very, very few cars will actually be going, getting on the freeway at ramp two and then getting off at seven. So maybe one to 2%, okay? And then maybe five to 10% will be going from two to six and then rest of them will be going two to five, okay? So you'll fill up your OD matrix like that and then you will, create routes corresponding to that OD matrix in your VSIM network, and you fill in with those percentages based on this OD matrix. Now, how do you know if these numbers make sense or not? To do that, we do what we call validation process. So what you'll do is you'll run the network with that origin counts and that uh, distribution of traffic in your static routes. And then you will count the cars you will put in a traffic counter in your simulation at these off-ramp points. These number six, number seven, and then it's number five. So these will be, and let me highlight them one more time. The star here. So you will put in your traffic counters in your network here, here, and here. And then you will have some data from Caltrans and you will try to see if, if these numbers make sense now. Now, let's say you figure out you're not getting enough count at ramp six. You're not getting enough count at ramp six. So then what would you do? You will divert some traffic from the main line to ramp six by adjusting your OD matrix. Okay. And then once you get to a point where your error at none of these locations is more than 5% of the real world count, that means you have a validated network. Now, one thing that you should remember is that this is not a hard and soft, fast process at this point. You have a lot of sources of errors. First of all, you probably have very precise peak hour traffic volume data from 2019 for your main line count. But your ramp volumes are only daily ramp count. So you have, you're making an assumption there that 10% of that traffic occurs during peak hour. So that's one problem, one source of error. Second source of error could be that your ramp counts are from 2018 
but your mainline counts are from 2019. So that's another source of error. So for now, we're just going to assume that, you know, try to validate with the 10% of traffic volume. 10% uh, of the daily volumes occur during the peak hour. So always, this is the thing to remember, your on-ramp counts and your starting point counts will be your input volumes and your off-ramp counts and your end of the network count will be used for validation for peak. Okay? If you're getting those volumes, if you're not getting those values, you'll adjust your OD metrics to adjust it and see how close can you get. In real world network like this, if you're actually doing some real analysis, you would actually go out in the field or conduct, connect with like one kind of street light or some kind of these data providers to get some real accurate data. But now we are just sort of practicing. So we are just gonna make certain assumptions and we try to get as close as we can, okay? So that's the process. Does that process sort of make sense? Are there any questions? And again, you might have more questions as you do more things as you sort of take this project on, but for now, I think this would be an appropriate way of doing this. Okay, so again, you have plenty of time to do this. Uh, so, so go ahead and start working on it, and then uh, you'll have next lab, and also you can work on it some on the, on the, uh, on the I think it's due, the, the first deliverable of this is like the, the next Tuesday beginning of the lab, so, so you'll have some time to work on it in the next lab. Plus also you'll have some time to work on it after the lab. So if you have questions, please let me know. I'll be happy to try to answer those. Again, this is not an exact process. This is sort of a so give or take that, that will have to happen there. Okay, so I'll go ahead and stop here.